Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Wen Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Police say child abuse cases this year are more serious and urge people to sound the alarm if they suspect mistreatment. Almost 5,000 Rugby Sevens tickets are still available three weeks before kickoff. And tensions rise on the Korean Peninsula with Pyongyang firing another missile and Seoul replying with sanctions. There's been a slight increase in child abuse cases this year, but they were more serious and included deaths. Police say people should not remain silent if they suspect children are being maltreated. Janice Lowe reports. Police Commissioner Raymond Su revealed that there were 795 child abuse cases in the first eight months of the year, up almost 2 percent from last year. But they were more serious. These included the death of a three-month-old boy from child abuse and a boy aged five who died from malnutrition last month. Over 70 percent of the abusers were either carers or parents. 28 percent of the victims were five years or younger, and almost half were between six and 11 years old. In September last year, Police left a six-year-old girl alone on the street for an hour as part of a social experiment. Almost 3,600 people walked past the girl, but only 180 noticed that she was on her own. And just six offered to lend a helping hand. In a police survey, 36 percent of the 340 respondents suspected their neighbors of child abuse but 76 of them chose to stay silent. Michael Fung from the Police Psychological Services Group said Hong Kongers are conscious of child protection, but they do not know how they can help or are worried about getting into trouble. Police reminded that intervention by others is crucial. If people suspect their neighbors of abusing their children, they could approach security guards or non-governmental organizations before alerting officers in emergencies. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. It was hard to get hold of a Hong Kong Rugby Sevens ticket in the days before the pandemic. But with just three weeks before the event returns, half of the tickets allocated for public sale are still unsold. Macy Mock reports. In pre-COVID days, a full house was the norm for the Hong Kong Rugby Sevens, with fans jetting in from around the world to be part of the city's biggest sporting attraction. For many, getting a ticket was an exercise in futility. But with three weeks to go before the tournament returns after an absence of two years, close to half of the tickets allocated for public sale are still up for grabs. Of the 10,000 tickets, 4,600 are still available. With capacity at Hong Kong Stadium in Causeway Bay limited to 85 percent, a full house is definitely not on the cards. Commissioner for Sports Yuan Tuck Kung said the Hong Kong Rugby Union had expected fewer overseas spectators this year and is relying on the local market. The union's chief executive, Robbie McRobbie, said he is satisfied with the progress. It has sold over 23,000 tickets, representing 76 percent of its targeted attendance to the public, rugby clubs and stakeholders. He expects local and international demand for tickets to grow as kickoff approaches. A three-day pass can cost up to $2,028, including the handling fee while a single-day ticket costs $1,010. Yuan said the government has no plans to give out free tickets for the sevens, which begin on the 4th of next month. Because of COVID, spectators are allowed to drink but not eat in the stands. The union believes that the lack of food options may be one factor discouraging general spectators. Maisie Mok, HKIBC. Two more types of new COVID subvariants have been detected in Hong Kong. 
This came as the city logged 5,106 new cases, including 336 that were imported. Among the imported cases, two were infected with a new subvariant BA.4.6 and BQ.1.1. Seven more patients died after contracting the virus. Lawmakers have urged the government to relax restrictions on those with an AMBER code in their Leave Home Safe app. They suggested ways in which arrivals can go to restaurants during their three days of medical surveillance. Maisie Mock reports. Lawmakers have told the government that restrictions on arrivals during their three days of medical surveillance are deterring tourists from coming here. During a health panel meeting, the lawmakers said arrivals should be given more freedom during their first three days in the city. Currently, they are barred from high-risk venues such as restaurants, so long as the code on their Leave Home Safe app is amber. Edward Learn said Amber code holders should be allowed to go to restaurants if their PCR test results are negative. But Health Secretary Lo Chong Mao defended the measure, saying it can keep new imported variants at bay. Tourism sector lawmaker Perry Yu suggested that tour groups be allowed to take visitors to specific restaurants to avoid contact with other people. He noted that most travel agencies have not recovered even 10 percent of their pre-COVID business. The health chief said further observation is needed. Legislator Rebecca Chan asked why the cap on social gatherings remains at four, while the number of restaurant diners has been raised to 12 per table. Lowe replied that the social gathering limit is restricted by law and a legal procedure is needed to increase the number. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The man who challenged the government's decision to annul vaccination exemption certificates has returned to the high court this time after he was denied legal aid. Kwok Chekin appealed. Kwok Chekin appealed after the legal aid department refused to assist him on the grounds that he's not a stakeholder in the case, as he has been triple jabbed. But Kwok, dubbed the king of judicial reviews, insisted that everyone is a stakeholder, as the case is of great public interest. On Tuesday, the High Court put the decision to invalidate over 20,000 certificates on hold, pending its ruling next week on whether the health secretary has annulment powers. Overseas now, North Korea has continued to ratchet up regional tensions by firing another missile and deploying fighter jets near the border with South Korea. Seoul responded with sanctions and condemned Pyongyang for violating a military pact. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has launched a series of missiles lately, much to the chagrin of his neighbors. Senior South Korean military officer Kang Ho-pil said Pyongyang had sent a short-range ballistic missile into the East Sea overnight. About 170 artillery shots were detected within the maritime buffer zones as well. Warplanes also zipped dangerously close to the common border. Kang warned North Korea that it is violating a military agreement and causing tensions on the Korean peninsula. He was referring to a 2018 pact in which both Koreas agreed to de-escalate tensions. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol added that Seoul is fully preparing for North Korean provocations. Seoul, meanwhile, imposed its first sanctions on Pyongyang in five years and blacklisted dozens of North Korean individuals and institutions involved in missile development. Japan also expressed concern as a number of North Korean missiles have been fired over its territory, some without warning. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirozaku Matsuno acknowledged that North Korea appeared to have made significant advances in nuclear and missile technology. The spate of missile tests in recent weeks raised fears that Pyongyang is gearing up for its seventh nuclear test. 
Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been ordered to appear before a U.S. congressional committee to explain his role in the riots on Capitol Hill in January last year. Thanks to the tireless work of our members and investigators, we've left, we have left no doubt, none that Donald Trump led an effort to upend American democracy that directly resulted in the violence of January 6th. He is the one person at the center of the story of what happened on January 6th. So we want to hear from him. This is arguably the most aggressive step that the panel has taken during its months-long investigation into the run-up to the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. It is almost certain that Donald Trump will not testify already. His spokesman has been dismissing this uh, move as a partisan exercise. Trump is accused of inciting his supporters to protest after claiming that he was cheated a victory in the 2020 presidential election. The storming of Capitol Hill left 140 police officers injured and was linked to five deaths. The Hong Kong stock market rallied today, ending a six-session losing streak. Despite the rebound, the Hang Seng Index recorded its worst weekly performance in three months. Chloe Fong reports. After declining for six sessions, the Hong Kong stock market returned to positive territory. Following an overnight rally on Wall Street, the Hang Seng Index started strongly and climbed above 17,000 points in the afternoon before ending 1.2 percent higher on turnover of $100 billion. But for the week, the benchmark lost 1,152 points, slumping almost 29 percent year-to-date and erasing 1.6 trillion U.S. dollars in equity assets. Property shares led the rally on speculation that support measures will be unveiled in the policy address on Wednesday. Sun Hong Kai properties climbed as much as 6.5 percent before closing 0.7 percent higher. Henderson Land Development also gained 0.7 percent. Hong Kong exchanges and clearing sank 4.6 percent to a 30-week low after investment bank Morgan Stanley forecast a drop in third-quarter earnings for the stock market operator. The British pound rose on reports that the government could revise its tax cut plan giving banking giant HSBC a 4.7 percent boost, with Standard Chartered jumping 4.5 percent. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. A look at the markets now. The Hang Seng Index closed up 198 points. In top 10 active stocks, Tencent up $3. Meituan also up $3. Tracker Fund up $0.17. Cents. AIA up $1.20. In foreign exchange rates, the euro is at 7.63, British pound 8.79. And in foreign markets, the UK FTSE is up 61 points. The Japanese yen has fallen to a 32-year low against the strengthening US dollar. The Japanese currency sank past 147 to the greenback after inflation in the United States rose by more than expected last month. This triggered concern that another U.S. interest rate rise will see a further outflow of yen to the U.S. to take advantage of the higher rate. Last month, Tokyo intervened in the money markets for the first time in 24 years to prop up the yen. It's expected to act again to stop the decline. On to the weather now, staying fine and dry this weekend with temperatures between 25 and 31 degrees. A monsoon reinforcement will bring cooler conditions early next week. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world.
That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Winnie Wong. Good night.